So they're always like, all right. And then, well, Valerie and my wife saw it, and I was like, oh, gosh. Yeah, that's right. Nesto saw it. That was yeah, like, oh. you know you did that. <laughs> Once the kids see And then they look at me, Dad, are you sure? Are you sure? And I was like, I'll take it to the vet, but y'all are cleaning everything up, and, mm. which isn't going to happen. No, it's not. It happens like maybe the first day, <laughs> and then after that, I'm not gonna win. <laughs> well, I should have just gotten you the puppy, man. No, that it... one's worse. Now. <laughs> this one at least. This one stayed in Valerie's room. That's funny. Well, we're talking about Adrian's dog. You got a new dog. You didn't see on Facebook. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Welcome back to Reflect Your Vibe. We're so excited, aren't we? What's up, y'all? Yes. yes. I'm excited that I'm here and not at the house <laughs> dealing. With that mangy. <laughs> Guys, w- welcome back. Um, for those of you joining us online, or maybe you're joining a little bit later, whatever time you're watching this, or whenever, maybe two years from now, welcome. We're excited that you're here. If uh, you haven't been keeping up with the series so far, we're on the Book of John. It's been fantastic. Valerie is what, who started this on this journey, yeah. and we're just going all the way through it. Um, it's been a really good study. We've had some really good discussions, and and we're going to continue our discussion uh, tonight. We're on John chapter 3. John is the fourth book in the New Testament. And if any of you guys need a Bible, if any of you guys need anything, just contact us and we can get you guys some no problem at all. Just let us know what you need and we'll send it your way. So other than that, guys, let's get started. Um, are there any prayer requests or praises that you guys have? Oh, uh, I want to give praise that my sister just came into town, right. and she got here safely, so we're going to have a good time. Good. Anything for you? Uh, just praying that uh, this dog, her name's Zena. Zena? Yeah, Zena. Uh, that, well, that's what we're going to, we're calling her now, but uh, that we can, uh, I don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean. You yeah. know what I mean. Yeah. yeah just like. <laughs> I had a dog for the longest time for 13 years. He passed away about a year oh, and a half ago. So we finally got another one. I kind of forgot what it's like to have an eight-month-old. Eight? Eight months. Oh, yeah. And it's going to get bigger, right? Yep. A little bit, yeah. Not to, is it like a full-blown husky? Full-blown. Full. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I hear those are, uh, I hear those are yappers. <laughs> That, they don't bark. She doesn't bark. No, man. I've seen she videos. Calls, eh. I've seen videos, man. They sing and they just do a bunch they of stuff. They talk a lot. Yeah, yeah they talk. talk. Is she a talker? Not yet. Maybe don't don't bark at her. Just like keep quiet. Don't yeah, talk. probably. We'll see what her, Well, she gets mad when I do her outside. So really? Praying that, yeah. She don't like it at she all? She don't like it, but you're, you're a husky. Yeah, be out there. <laughs> Hang out there. Stay out there. Well, yeah, we got to pray for your family. Yeah, there's family and we can handle this dog, but she's very nice. So. Yeah. Um, I guess I just want to, uh, just, you know, thank God. Um, I got hurt the other day, uh, was it two days ago? And show him, show him the damage, man. That was not too bad. It's just like, uh, they, do? this, uh, this glass thing, it Try fell on my clean. wrist Ooh. and, and like it split it open. And then, uh, so they like, the lady was like, do you want stitches? And I was like, can I have anything else? And she's like, I can glue it. I was like, please. Thank you. <laughs> so she just pushed it together and glued it. Yeah. I just can't, I can't really do much with it, so I don't mess up the glue. That's what happens when you like try to clean. Yeah, I, I was trying to clean. Yeah, you know, clean. <laughs> lift weights, I don't know. <laughs> lift weights. Shout out to Elizabeth, because yeah. she was making them clean. It's Elizabeth's fault, yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot, Elizabeth, for making me clean. Um, yeah, and uh, for for those of you guys who don't know, um, maybe um, you haven't been keeping up, at least with the sermons, but uh, my wife and I have uh, accepted a call to go to Oklahoma. And so we are packing up, and uh, we're going to be leaving uh, February 1st. And so I just want to let you guys know on Reflecting Revive, it's been a privilege to just be a part of this community with you guys here on Facebook. And uh, thank you for just per- supporting this. And and I pray that it's been a blessing for you, wherever you be watching. And it will this ministry will continue on. Um, it just sadly, I won't be here at all. And so I know God will continue to bless you guys as you guys continue to watch, so you guys dive in, and you reflect and revive. Um, just keep my wife and I in prayer as we're just uh, preparing to go to our next uh, calling, our next uh, church as well. So I just need prayer for that as well. I think you have a comment. I'm we do? Sure. Maybe. Uh, it, it popped up here. I don't know if it's... Oh, yeah. Pastor Tim and Tanya lost Eddie. He got hit by a car. Oh, my gosh. I have to give I have to give him a call. Um, Tim is uh, Rosemary's son-in-law yeah. and... Yeah, their their dog just died. Oh no. Oh my goodness. Oh, Tanya's probably broken. 
Oh, pray for Tanya. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, that's terrible. Pray for peace and comfort. Absolutely. If you guys have any other prayer requests, please put them on the chat. We pray for them. And then also on our church website, there's actually a prayer board. And so if you go to our church website, you can post it on oh, uh, yeah, epnortheast.org slash prayer. If you if you head to that website, we uh, we see your prayers. They're posted on the board, and we do pray over them. So, um, Rosemary, thank you for letting us know. We're definitely going to be keeping uh, Tim and Tanya in prayer. Um, man, that's devastating. It's all good. We'll, we'll try yeah. another time. We'll we'll try another time. epnortheast.org slash prayer. Um, you guys can post your prayer requests on and praises on the board. And if you need anything, we are here in the Northeast, and we're here to provide for the community. So just let us know. Guys, let's pray. In Joshua, man, um, let's keep pray for, make sure you pray for Tim and Tanya. Sir. Sure. And the dog and, and just us. And then whoever else is watching. Go sure. for it, man. Inspire his. Father God, thank you so much again. Thank you. We cannot stop Thank you, Father God, for allowing us to be in this position. Thank you for allowing us to have people who support us, Father God. I ask that they continue to watch and they continue to have an open heart as they listen, Father God. I ask that you please be with those who are in need. You, you've seen the prayer request today, Father God. I ask that you please be with Adrian, that him and his family will be able to handle Zena. You know, it's not an easy task, so I ask that they can have your help, Father God, being able to take care of her and being able to nurture her and give her what she needs, Father God. I ask that you please be a pastor. He's accepted a call from you, Father God. I ask that you please bless him and you please protect him and keep him safe where he's going. I ask that you please continue to be with our family at the church, that we may be able to thrive and continue to push forward what he he was striving for, Father God, that he's done such a great job. Father, I ask that you please be with Tim and Tanya, Father God, as they lost Eddie, Father God. That's a huge, tremendous loss, Father. I ask that you please be with them, help them uh, grow spiritually, Father God, through this. And I ask that they can have healing with them and that they can have people who support them father and who are there for them father god i know it's it's hard to lose a dog i lost a dog and didn't even die and i cried father god so i ask that you please be with them in the name of the lord we pray amen amen um yeah definitely we're gonna reach out to him and tanya and let them know um and I'm praying for you guys hardcore um guys last week um you weren't here adrian we had a cool discussion with my man gavin he's not here either he went to go see his family in what minnesota yes sir minnesota, minnesota. And so, Joshua, bro, but you wish you here, bro. Sir. So, give me a recap. What did we learn last week, bro? All right, so we learned about Jesus' first glimpse of him being the Messiah, him showing people who he is. When he was at this wedding, this party, and he had turned the water into wine when there was no wine. And they, it ended up being the best wine that the guests had ever tasted. <laughs> so, that was the first glimpse of him and showing that he was the son of man. Yeah. And I loved how I loved how God's first miracle is is at a wedding, is at a party, mm-hmm. and um, to help to help people with it seems something kind of insignificant, mm-hmm. you know, in the light of the salvation for all humanity. But God yeah. cares; He cares. It's, well, the revelation, the bride getting ready for the bridegroom, yeah. and all, right? It, it all it all comes together with when we studied Revelation many yeah. many months ago. That's true. Yeah, I didn't think about that, and it's just like God cares about it all. And I and I love I love the fact that you know like his mom you know hey do this mother it's not my time listen to what he says and she just gets away from the story you don't even mm-hmm. hear from her again yeah. I love how I love how Jesus is just um, you know he's he's doing the will of the Father but his heart for his mother man it's strong and it's just like it shows a human side to Jesus I think Amen. I kind of like it you know what yeah. moms can do what moms have power over sons I don't know if that's Shoot. just me but she hey. got power over the son of man <laughs> that's, that's kind of funny mm-hmm. um, I think uh, well we also talked about you know Jesus going into the temple um, the place where it was supposed to represent his I mean just who he is mm-hmm. his ministry. And when he goes, he finds he finds it upside down. People selling merchandise, people people taking advantage of other people in the temple. And it just seems Jesus is so overwhelmed with anger and frustration. He starts flipping tables and getting angry. And this is how he also reveals the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. And I and I like to see that Jesus is a man of action. He's a man of prayer, a man who's meek, but a man who's willing to stand up for the vulnerable and the weak. And, uh, man, Jesus is just all sorts of just, I mean, you can't put him in a box. He's doing things that you just never thought. I love Jesus in chapter 2. Um, anything, I know you've read it multiple times. Anything oh, yeah. that stuck out to you? Uh, you know, for him, it's, it's, a, it's like I think of it as a house of prayer, a house where people come who are broken. 
Um, we, we had talked about it. it. It's very hard for people to come through the doors. Yeah, we did talk of, about that. Of church, and, yeah. and, and it's it's super hard. And, you know, when you, you, you see what the people were doing and, and how they're sucked into all this, this stuff that has nothing to do with what God wants, yeah. you know, for his will and his purpose. And, you know, this, my house is for, for those that need healing, for those that need love and that need mercy. Yeah. And they need help. They need help to repent. They need help to turn their lives and overcome challenges and yeah. hurdles in their life. And this, this is not the way to do it, which yeah. is, you know, and, and what I like is that, you know, you see a range of emotions through them. You're actually saying it's, it's okay to be mad. Yeah, it is. For us, it's okay to be mad, but, where, 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 you know, righteous indignation, where does that anger lead to you? Do, yeah. Do you, you know, how do you respond to it when you're upset with it? Uh, about Injustice, things, and yeah. yeah, like you know, do you, were you fighting for what's right, or are you just fighting for something meaningless? Or are you arguing, mm. getting mad about things that are insignificant, or is it really something that uh, has to do with the heavenly yeah, places, true. if you will? That, I think that's a great. I point. think I think his reaction really goes to show how much he really cares about us. Yeah, like he could have easily just okay trashed it, but like just gotten rid of it and just mm. said okay whatever. It's fine. Let them do what they want to do. But mm-hmm. he cares so much about each individual that he went and and turned it back into what he meant for it to be. Yeah. Yeah. I like how then he he then he portrays that this temple is actually his his own very body, mm-hmm. you know. And what they're gonna do to the actual temple is they're gonna destroy it. But in three days he says I'm gonna be lifted up again. Mm-hmm. But it goes even beyond that, especially as we break out and go after after Jesus is resurrected and he goes to the kingdom of heaven. And the apostles begin to write and just begin to elaborate about just the meaning and the symbolism behind mm-hmm. everything Jesus has done. He says that the Holy Spirit now lives in a new temple and it's in our hearts. And I think I think something that I, I, I just realized is just like our own lives, our own bodies. Are we are we people of individuals who who are providing forgiveness or providing peace, providing mm-hmm. providing safe refuge for other individuals, for for people who are just going through a hard time. Are we living temples also for yeah. others? You know, or we, if Jesus came to our hearts, would he be flipping tables? I'm sure he's flipping tables constantly in our hearts, but sure. the idea is are we presenting ourselves or are we living out the kingdom of God? And that's kind of what we're going to talk about in chapter 3 today. Talking about this new birth, yeah. a new a new type of way of living, a new type of thinking, um, and it starts with a very prominent man named Nicodemus, which is actually interesting. Mm. Um, and we're gonna get a little bit into it. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, um, please put them on the chat. I'll be posing questions, asking questions, and so if you'd like to answer them, please do by all means. Uh, if you like, hey, pause, can you rewind? We can definitely do that. We're going to dive into the text here. John chapter 3, um, you want to one verse at a time, and then I'll sure. pause when we got to discuss. Sounds good. Sounds good. Go for it. All right. John chapter 3, uh, verse 1. Yeah. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same, the same came to Jesus by night. And said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art uh, a, a teacher who has come from God. For no man can do these miracles unless he is from God. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? And here comes the crazy part. Jesus says, Truly I tell you, unless someone is born of water and spirit... Mm. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. Whatever is born of flesh is flesh, and whatever is born of spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases, and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Pause. we got to put this down. Sir. Let's, let's talk about the guy first. Yeah. Let's talk about, let's try to step into his shoes for a moment. Who is Nicodemus? What does it mean to be a Pharisee? What does it mean to be a ruler of the Jews? And what does it mean that he comes to Jesus at night? Who is this guy? This guy, he's like, so the Pharisees, they were the smartest people when it comes to the Bible. They knew the ins and outs, the ups, the downs. They know everything about the Bible, in and out. And he was well acknowledged on uh, like what we can and can't do. Yeah, the law, for yeah. sure. What about you? Uh, when we come, when he says he comes to him at night, I find that interesting. I think he wants discretion. I think he mm-hmm. truly knows in his heart that 
there's something up with this Jesus character, right? Okay. They're, 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 this guy tells miracles, and on top of that, he probably doesn't want other Pharisees to see that he's mm. there, you know, because everyone, all these Pharisees are against Jesus, you know. They have their own warped version of who God is and what he should do for the Jews coming back, assuming probably, they probably all think, well, you know, salvation is for us, we're going to rule the world. But, again, the way Jesus speaks to him is is through a different lens, and and I don't think this guy fully understands that yet. No, it's interesting. And he's he's a ruler of the Jews. That means he's well-versed. And he comes to Jesus. I think I agree with you. I think he doesn't really want to be... He doesn't want to be seen with Jesus. But he's curious about yeah. Jesus. So there's like this... There's this like tango he's he's doing with Jesus. Like, okay, I want some knowledge. But I, want, I don't want to be associated with you. And Nicodemus, I like how he calls him rabbi. Mm. You know, a teacher. A teacher of the law. A teacher of God. I mean, a rabbi in Jesus' culture is someone who is... It, it's a, a high... high well respected. Well respected. Mm -hmm. I mean, if a rabbi walked around your house, I mean, you were blessed by God. Yeah, if a rabbi a would eat, uh, eat at your table. And so he's giving Jesus recognition, but also at the same time, he, he doesn't be recognized by Jesus. That's interesting. Why do you think that? Like, I'm, I'm willing to pay respects to him, but I don't want to be associated with him. Why? Because I don't think he, like like Adrian said, he doesn't understand the full scope of it. He doesn't really trust in him yet. Mm -hmm. And I think that has to do with him not having full understanding. So can he really then give true recognition to him? Or is it just like yeah. him just saying like fancy words? You know? He's not acknowledging it on the outside, sugarcoating it, if you will. But it, and, I, and, you know, where it says, um, maybe I'm getting ahead, unless it's one of born of water and spirit. So it's not so much just being baptized, but it's it's a renewing of the heart. It's a renewing of the mind. It, it, it's it's seeing the way people, the way Christ wants you to see people. Mm -hmm. And that's something that probably Nicodemus doesn't understand. Yet. So we get the idea of baptism. I mean, Jesus off the bat, you know, this guy's saying you're from God, whatever. But then, like, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. So this renewal, this new birth, what is Jesus talking about here like, there is a, a required membership in order for you to see the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. There is something you have to do, something that is required. What does it mean to be born again in the way that you think Jesus is alluding to at this moment? So we were actually talking about this, and the way that the world see, sees it as being born again is when you're baptized. You know, when you go and you get baptized by the priest and you're dipped in the water. However, God is talking about spiritually being baptized, which is, like he's, he refers to... After, um, Another book is that he was uh, baptized with the fire, my bad. And that's basically within us. That's our hearts. That's our minds. That's our full body being mm. completely changed and mm. flipping the script on us and, like, giving us a whole new insight on God, which does it doesn't happen with just being baptized with water. Mm. So there, there is there's a way, there's a symbolic way then, like, being born again. Like, mm. Nicodemus is talking about, like, coming from some, a mother's womb, right? Which all of us have, right? Because we're alive, mm -hmm. you know? But Jesus is talking about a new one. One that cannot come from this world. One that can only come from the heavenly world. Right. What do you think it means to be born again as you're just looking at this with fresh eyes? You know, I think when at first you're like... It, Maybe like Nicodemus, you don't quite understand, especially if you're ever reading this for the first time. Yeah. You know, like, what is he really trying to get at? And then once you study and, and, and you look at it more and more, and you realize it, it's, you know, the, the what does God really want from us? Yeah. What does he want us to do? It's, it's, he wants our hearts. He wants our minds. He wants to, you know, get away from things that aren't going to lead you yeah. to him, right? And I think... With here, with this uh, part, um, and I think it makes sense when you, when when you do get baptized, you know you have that moment of euphoria. I think for a moment, yeah. But then the hard stuff comes. Mm. You know that that you still got to deal with pain. You still got to deal with anguish and misery. You know, and then I think the way you maybe saw the world before mm. you were baptized. You know, not just water and, and you know by spirit, but it's one way to look at it, but then when you look at it through the lens of Christ, mm. you realize how much love and mercy come to play. You realize how how abundant, important grace is mm. with God. But then you you, you start to kind of you have to dust yourself off and pick yourself up, and, and you gotta just see your way through those hard times. Mm. So it's not some big crazy experience then to be born again. Like is the way you're describing it, it's a journey. Yes. 
So even so, Paul yeah. talks about it. Huh. It's 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 a race. What does he say? It's a race. It's a race, huh. and it's a long distance one. It's not just a you race. know. It's some. It's not so much. And then you know what is it in the other part that he says? Or you, you die daily, mm. right? To Christ is that Romans? I, I think it's Romans. Something like that. And it's, it's just that it all comes to me little by little. But again, it's 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 that journey that that you got to take. I mean, obviously we know where we want to be. Yeah. Where we want to go, Jesus. right? Yeah. Yeah, and well, you know. We'll get to John three sixteen here in a bit, and yeah. the real where the belief takes us. But it's it's the journey. So so like most people didn't think like to be born again. Oh, like fire came down in heaven on me, or like there was this crazy tumultuous experience that I just never imagined. And at that moment, I was just changed. And then after you get out of the water, right after that experience, like you said, life hits. Yeah. But being born again isn't just in that moment. It's every day. It's day to day. Yeah, it's, it's, step it's, by it's step. Not a, right? It's not a quick dopamine fix. Yeah. Ah, you know, that's tough. A lot tough. of, people, you know, yeah, a lot of people look at this and want that quick dopamine fix. They want that light. They want this. They, you know, and this this has no substance. Oh. You know, a lot of things that we have today, and you, you, their substance has to come from, you know, exercising that faith daily. I mean, marriage is more than the wedding day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Marriage is every day after the wedding. Yeah, I mean, the, the great, it's great. It's awesome. <laughs> Everyone's so excited, right? Like, yeah. yeah. And then what happens two to three years and later? And then, you know, you know, laundry day and <laughs> oh. clothes on the floor and someone is sick. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. you know, then disagreements happen with your your mm. your wife or your husband, whoever. And then you're like, oh. And food in the car. Oh, yeah, food, food in the car. You know, watch yourself, <laughs> right? We're alive. Cleaning and spraining We're your alive, all right? You're alive, all right? You know, they, no. life happens and it hits hard. And, and you know, it's it's almost like you ha- it's a renew that spirit. You know, being born of that spirit, you have to allow that spirit, the Holy Spirit, to come in mm-hmm. every, every day. day. Every day. You know, it's not just like, hey, I got it, great. You know, and I'm I th- good. I think there's another element to it, especially when we think about Nicodemus. Yeah. Nicodemus is a Jew from the family of Abraham, right? And most people interpret it like the children of God, those who are born from a Jewish lineage, were were saved. Right. Yeah, they automatically thought like, "Hey, we we're in." And God is saying, Unless, "Everyone else is all messed up." And and, and, and imagine what God when God says this to a man like Nicodemus, a Jew of a Jew, and like he's the elite of the elite, probably mm-hmm. from some tribe, some important tribe, maybe even from the Levites. Who knows? And God is saying, "Your lineage, the way you were born and grafted into the the family of Israel, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter." And it's just like your your parents' faith doesn't matter. Like, or I love this idea that I don't care where you came from, mm-hmm. what type of lineage, what mm-hmm. type of, what type of environment, culture, family, upbringing, whatever. It doesn't matter. Wherever you came from, you need to be born again. I love that. Church, church for 20 years, church for 15. You've been going to church every day, tithing, offering this and that. You follow all the different patterns that you're supposed to. But if you are not born of the spirit in, within yourself, which actually it changes you from the inside, I don't care. It doesn't matter. And I think I think that might have hit Nicodemus in another way because he had all the qualifications. He had like the birth certificate said exactly what he needed to say, and Jesus is like not sufficient. He humbled him quick, real quick. I think, oh, yeah. yeah. Quick. And I think it can even humble us as well. Oh, yeah. um, so then he's obviously like, who? What? What? You, I can't call my mother's womb. Blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> now, what do you think? Water and spirit talk about that for a second because jesus like he breaks it down even more unless you were born of water and spirit what do you think that means that's signifying the two baptisms right what do you think so i think it's signifying the physical baptism and the spiritual baptism Mm. and uh we're talking about earlier that they're both coming hand in hand it's not you can't have one without the other Mm. and so once you're baptized physically you have to work to be able to become baptized spiritually you have to accept jesus and trust him and that does not come easy at all Mm. you have to really work to that i think so i I like that Mm. so john the baptist he became baptizing with water like you're Mm -hmm. saying that's the physical that's the full immersion underneath the water right and it's kind of interesting you don't really read about any of that in the old testament but in the new it just happens all of a sudden you're like where did this come from right so water the physical but the spirit, the spirit is not something that you can like grasp or like dip, be dipped into. Mm-mm. And it's, it's a gift. Yeah. It's given to you. It's one that it's one that if you believe, it'll be given. And one that if it's given to you, it will do something. Mm-hmm. Right? What do you think? 
Yeah, you have to allow the Spirit to come in. And I, and I think when... How does one allow the Spirit to come in? That's a good question. Well, you, you gotta... It's not gonna want to come in if you got too much distractions, you got too much stuff going on, I think. Um, you have to clear your mind. You have to be able to... I don't know. This is a practice I have to fight every day to, you know. Uh, you gotta want it. You gotta want to study God's word. You gotta mm-hmm. want to pray every day. You gotta have that relationship with Him. In fact, where you know it says born of what water and the Spirit. I mean, water could also be the living water. Who is living water? Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, His Word is living water. So you gotta absorb this too. And mm-hmm. you know, it, wherever you put your habits, that's who you are. Yeah. If you make it a habit to study and apply. You know, seek, be him. Consi- seek him and then doors will open for you. And I think that's how yeah. the spirit makes its way in, if you will. And I, and I kind of like how it also says, like, it's considered like the wind. You have no control over the wind. Yeah. None. And I think it's like you, you give it your best. Like God wants you to put forth your effort. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Put forth your effort. But also at the same time, like God's going to do something that you didn't have no idea he was going to do. Mm-hmm. Like it's a gift for a reason. And so it's it's like that desire that one gets, I think it comes from the spirit. Like it's the gift. Like if, like the wind is blowing in every direction. You have no idea where it's coming from. And one day it just hits you and there's this desire in your heart to like, man, who is Jesus? Like where did that come from? And I, I would argue that's the gift of God's grace. And so I like how you're saying like it, there's there's a part to play. And then yeah. also Jesus is saying like, <laughs> and that part to play isn't sufficient. That's where my grace is sufficient. You know, I need you to do both. I one, takes, it uh, takes time. One thing I like I'm learning right now is just like, you you have to be patient, like really patient. Like you can be working, 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 striving for Jesus, but He comes when He feels fit. It's not something that you can force, like that, like you just said. And I, I just that just hit me. I just learned that. Mm, that's hard. That's it's funny that like in like this the wind how it blows. You have no idea where it's blowing. Like. The spirit might be working on an aspect of your heart that, like, you're like, oh, I want to do all this, and God's like, uh, uh-uh, over here. This is this is where I want to go, and you got to be patient to to actually yeah. allow the spirit to lead you, allow the wind to lead you, and the wind is blowing in every single direction that you have no idea. And so, yeah, I would argue it does take patience. Yeah, and it, and it does come at even some of the worst times. Oh, of feeling because. <laughs> I mean that's how I came back here. It was it was it was just I felt something. There's a couple of heartbeats and on, you know, the wind. The wind, if you will, the spirit was like it's time. I had like no control over that. It just came to my head. I was like, now oh, we gotta go back. Mm. And trust me, I was in a low place at that time. I was like, I don't know how that hit me. It's not but convenient. It, it's not, but it hit me. It's like, but there was a desire too with it. The, the kind of social the so, grace. Yeah, like you shouldn't have had that desire. No. That was a gift. And I was 100% undeserving during that time. Mercy. And And yet the grace still supplies. I like how, I like how, you know, that wind is dangerous, man. When it blows, it never is convenient. I don't think so. No, man. It's so dangerous. Like, we're we're grateful for it now. Yeah. But in that moment, man, if you open up those windows and allow the wind to come in, boy, have mercy. God's like, I'm going to get dirt on your face, everything. (laughs) Come on. Come on. I'm going to clean you up. (laughs) I think you're feeling that wind right now. No, dude, that wind. You're moving? (laughs) That could be the wind, man. That could be. I mean, Oklahoma, man. man. You're right. It's not convenient. (laughs) I don't want to go. That's a tornado (laughs) thing you up there, man. Physical tornado, too, up there, man. Let me tell you. I was at the coffee shop and I almost broke down crying. Oh, wow. I was like, I was, I'm working on this like goodbye video, you know, for the church, um, like I did for the ark. And, yeah, yeah. and I was like, I was like, dang, I'm gonna miss them. And I was like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I'm at the coffee shop. You ain't crying here. And I was like, hold on, <laughs> get your crap together. Let me enjoy my book yeah, right yeah. here, right now. No, I'm, I'm not crying for these people. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't know these people, <laughs> but you know, it's crazy because that's the thing, man. I also think there's another element to this. I think I think uh, cleansing, like rosemary, water, yeah. and spirit. The cleansing. Notice this. That spirit's gonna flow on, blow on some people you had no idea it'd blow mm-hmm. on. It's gonna clean some people that you had no idea it could clean, and like you have no control over the gospel of Jesus Christ. The people that you had no idea would come. The spirit's like that's the one I'm working on. Like I, I just can't get over the fact that God is uncontrollable. 
the moment we try to control him, the moment that we try to make sure we put him in this box so that he reaches these types of people and rejects these type of people, that he doesn't associate with these types of people but goes after these people, I mean, like, we have to be careful because the spirit is uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. And that's a great thing because the moment I'm in control of God, I become God. Mm -hmm. and and like whoever is born of flesh is flesh and whoever is born of spirit is mm -hmm. spirit and i think there are ways in which we can see those who are actually born of spirit and those who are born of flesh this is the way i think we can see it do they bear the fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. day to day i'm not talking about when they were converted i'm not talking about those 15 years ago when you felt god in the shower and you fell to your knees i'm talking about right here and right now you know we love to go to the past and reminisce about the past but Right here, right now, are you growing in the fruits of the Spirit? And those who are, are born of the Spirit. And those are the ones who have authority within the church. Mm -hmm. Everyone else, I don't care how many years you've been Adventist, Christian, Baptist. I could care less. If you do not bear the fruits of the Spirit of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, get out of here, man. You yeah. do not have the Spirit. You know, that's, that's the... That's the type of characteristics someone needs to bear or is growing in that, I would argue. Yeah. Um, do not be amazed that I told you, verse 7, you must be born again. The wind blows where it pleases and you hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. So is it is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And Amen. we continue on, verse Amen. 9. Nicodemus answered and said to him, how can these things be? Uh, why, why do you think he's questioning this? Why, why, why? Yeah. Something's stirring in him. Why is uh, life starting to change a little? Yeah. Why is it changing? Hold on, why is it changing? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. What do you think? What do you think? What's, what's going in this man's mind? A Jew of a Jew, the elite of the elite. He's starting to doubt what he even He's believes. He's starting to doubt himself. It's yeah. like, that's not what the Torah says. Like, whoa, oh. wait a minute, wait a minute here. How can these things be? How what, can it be? What do you think Nicodemus is feeling in this moment? Jesus is telling you something brand new. He's uncomfortable for the first time. What does that mean? I want to hear your thoughts. He okay. He's he's a Pharisee. He he's a know it all. I rule the Jews. I'm I'm probably dressed in this fine suit and everything. And people come and bow to us and pray. Blah blah blah. And you know we're the seed of Abraham. But then you know God shows up and now it's like wait a minute. I do not understand what another teacher is saying and it's driving me wild because I want. I, he's probably right and I just don't want to admit it. Why wouldn't you want to admit it? Because it's he's wrong, and a lot of people have too much pride. That sucks. It sucks to be wrong. It's one thing to like, okay, I, look, you're wrong, but it's another thing yourself to believe that you're wrong Man. and to admit that you're wrong. It's it's hard to like, crap, I messed up. Um, I I think I totally messed up. But how do I go back to, hmm. you know, I, I lived this way for so long, and I've I've. You know, I've ruled this way. I've been a, 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 a Pharisee for this long, and it's it's all for not. I've been doing it wrong, and it's hard maybe for him to admit that. He, he's an old man. Right. An old man had kids, and his kids probably have kids. His wife is old. Everything's old. He's stuck in his ways, and now he just met the rabbi. And the rabbi is saying, yeah, you got it all wrong, man. Do you think, yeah. think it would be a stretch to say that he felt a little bit of that wind? I think he felt that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, something starting to stir. Right, he came. He probably came, right, seeking to find things in common, finding out he has nothing in common Wait, with this it's guy. It's nighttime. It's like, well, no one's around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, yo, yo, what's up, man? Hey, <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you mean? <laughs> what? I mean, <laughs> what? I mean, I, I really feel there's someone who's going to be watching this. I have no idea. But they're, in a, they're, in a, they're about to go through a paradigm shift, and it's going to be uncomfortable. Like, everything you thought you knew is just wrong. Everything you thought you knew to be right, garbage. Mm -hmm. And now you're you're coming in the fork of the road. Are you going to continue to walk the way of of this of this path that you've been walking for your entire life because it feels comfortable, or are you willing to step off the boat mm -hmm. onto the shaky waters like Peter and to mm -hmm. walk with Jesus on the waters? And it's just like I really feel like there's probably someone who's going to be watching this. I guarantee you, man. I feel it in the spirit. Like God, they're like this? they're like Nicodemus right now. Oh my gosh, how can this be? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought I knew all this, you know? I think we have a comment. Oh, sweet. Tony, they are teachers of the Bible and yet they don't understand. That's so mm -hmm. good yeah. because everyone who's watching this 
No one's safe. Hi, Tony. Hey, Tony. <laughs> nobody's safe. Yeah. Me, I'm not safe. You're not safe. No, I don't wow. care where you've been at in church. Nobody's safe. Jesus' gospel is completely contrary to the way of our minds in this world. Yeah. <clears throat> completely. And it continues. Uh, verse 10. Go for it. Are you a teacher of Israel and don't know these things? Jesus replied. Jesus being petty. Go to verse 11. <laughs> <laughs> Most surely I say to you, we speak. That we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. Man, if I told you about earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? Mm -hmm. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. Okay, break this down for me. I'm I'm a five-year-old. Break it down for me. What does this mean? This is tough. If, 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 I guess I'm trying to think of my own little five-year-old. Yeah, tell, tell us Seb Nesto, he's watching. I guess if I had to answer this, and I, and I could be wrong, but... Try it. If I tell you to believe in something that is happening right now here in our world and you don't believe it to be true, then how are you going to believe anything I teach you about? God. Things that you can't see. Things that you can't see. Hmm. You know what's funny? That means everything Jesus is saying is visible to the human eye. Mm -hmm. Jesus is not speaking things that go contrary to reality. He's speaking things to things that he has seen, to things that are right there in front of him, and yet Nicodemus can't see it. Mm. That's like, I like that. I like that illustration. Yeah. Like, I think think creation itself testifies of God. And yet, and yet we're not willing to acknowledge yeah, it. It's probably like everything's in front of us, but we just take it for granted. That what is that cross there. thing you said? Remember that Luke... Luke something with, Lam- La- Lam- yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. La- 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 let me look it up. Hold yeah, on. look it up. La- while La- you La- what do you think this means? I was about to say Lamas. <laughs> no. What do you think it means? If I told you about earthly things and you don't believe me, how will you believe things about heavenly things? Stuff. <laughs> Put me on the spot, man. Oh, no, you're wrong. You're not wrong. What do you think it means when you're watching this? I like I like verse thirteen as you guys are thinking about it. No one has ascended into heaven except the one who laminated. Yeah, laminated. Laminated. Protein well, molecule. You got to go back to reflect and revive. <laughs> laminated. We talked about that. How creation what testifies. What holds us up? Yeah. The very protein or the protein molecule. Yeah, I think I think notice Jesus is saying I can speak about these things because I am the author of these things. Mm -hmm. The very things that I'm telling you, I'm the creator. What he's saying is blasphemous. To the person. To to Nicodemus. Blasphemous. Original thought, I think Jesus is saying he's the creator. He is. That's original thought. That's that has to be it. You didn't just say that. I didn't say that, but I'm saying that has to be it. You said (laughs) it. I didn't say it. I take care for you, bro. Chill. I'm joking. (laughs) Yeah, but that's all you, man. That is true. Jesus is the creator. He is the author. And he's the only one who can testify these things. And then let's jump down to verse 14 and 15. This is where it gets really good. This is where gospel gets in. Verse 14. 14. And Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man uh, be lifted up. So that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only Son so that... did you just read that? No, I see. Oh, yeah. so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. And then, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that to save the world through him. Verse 18. I might be saying, he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Let's pause there. Tony has a comment here. She said that God has sent his son to save, to save and protect us from bad things. That is how I would say it. I agree. Amen. He's coming to testify things that he knows to be true. And if you're not willing to believe him, you're not going to be willing to believe anything else he says. Mm-hmm. He's not gonna, If he's explaining things that are present in your world that you can see right here and right now, how in the world are you not going to believe? How in the world are you going to believe about things that you cannot see, that you cannot fathom? Yeah. You know? And then they get so much better. It's talking about the snake. What is a snake lifting up in the wilderness? You know? Jesus is the one who testifies these things. And he says, just as Moses. What is, what is this just as Moses? He's making a comparison between what he's talked about to about the snake in the wilderness. Break down the snake in the wilderness for me, fellas. What is this? Have you guys heard of this? 
Yeah. If I read about it, I don't remember much other than I think he lifted it over. Mm-hmm. No way. Over the Israelites, or I am trying to remember. So in Numbers, I think 21, I think, I read it today. Numbers 21, Jesus, the Israelites were set free from his, from Egypt, right? And they're grumbling, they're complaining. And God's like, okay, you don't want my protection? Fine. And I read in the commentary back in co- college that the land that they were walking to in the wilderness was actually infested with snakes. Mm-hmm. And so the commentary made a, made a claim that saying that God was protecting the Israelites the whole time. But since the Israelites want to grumble, God pretty much he moved his hand of protection away from the Israelites. And in doing so, the snakes that had been surrounding them finally had access to the Israelites. And so the snakes began to bite the people, right? Infecting them with poison. The people were dying. The people were getting sick. And the people cried out to God. They actually cried out to Moses. And Moses cried out to God. And God's like, listen, the way these people are going to be healed, go make a snake out of bronze, put it on a pole, and lift the pole up. Yeah, very much I remember. Anyone who looks at this pole and anyone who looks at the snake will live. Anyone who doesn't will die. I like, I, I love how like, how God treats us, like he really treats us as his children. Like he teaches us a lesson, he lets us learn the hard way, but he always comes back for us yeah. to save us. Like a parent. And I think also for since he's speaking also to Nicodemus, he gave him something that he could understand. Something that he's been reading. Then he's been reading probably uh-huh. that you know, if you're you're a, you understand the Torah as well as you do being a Pharisee, let me put it to you in ways that you can understand. Yes. That. And so everyone who is born of the spirit is it and the wind is blowing, right? This is the illustration that he's making. You have to be born again. You have to. You have to be born of the Spirit. What is the Spirit? Who is the person that is going to help you be born again? And he makes an a, a example by using the story of Moses for Nicodemus to understand. And that story is about a snake that was hung on a pole. And if you looked at it, you were saved. That's how one is born again. Who does that bronze snake symbolize? Mm. Who does it symbolize? Jesus. How no, and why? Save. He could touch his cloth, you can be saved. You can look at him, be saved. You can ask and in faith, heal someone from that you're thinking about. Far away. Far away. All you got to do is just focus on me. So the snakes that were killing the people, God says, make a bronze snake out of it and hold it on the cross. And so one can argue, he who knew no sin became sin. Mm-hmm. The very thing mm-hmm. that was killing the people, mm-hmm. Jesus took it upon himself, was hung on a cross. And that is how people are saved, by Jesus taking on the consequences of sin in and of himself and Mm -hmm. dying to it so that we can live through his resurrection. And so Jesus is making this audacious claim that if you look to the Son of Man, if you believe on the Son of Man, anyone who believes will not perish but have eternal life. And, And it's crazy that Jesus has come not to condemn the world, but to save it. What does that mean? So... When what it means to condemn, it means to judge, and he's come to to protect us rather than throw those who are in the dirt back deeper into the dirt, shame them. He comes to protect those who are looking for him, who are seeking for him, and honestly, the only way to do that is to push away those who are doing bad. So, but then again, that doesn't mean that anybody who's doing bad can't come to Jesus and can't accept him and can't mm. feel his protection and his love. So really like he's not this bad guy who wants to just throw us around and he wants to rule over us and he wants to have things his way he wants to protect those who want to be with him and he's accepting anyone who wants to be with him yeah i like that Throwing a lifeline a lifeboat come on that's mm-hmm. what he's doing come on he i mean what's the point of condemning there's no need to condemn us <laughs> like god knows <laughs> yeah it's like you guys cannot do anything Right? There's no need to condemn. At this point, God's like, listen, I've come here to save somebody. Whoever wants to believe in me can be saved. The lifeline. And and I like how it says here, anyone, in verse 18, anyone who believes is in him is not condemned. But anyone who does not believe is already condemned. So, the thing is, everybody's condemned. Mm-hmm. Nobody's safe. We always say that good, how does, how does bad things happen to good people? No one's good. No one is good. Mm-hmm. I don't care how you live your life. At some point or another, you have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Mm-hmm. At some point, you have been the individual who has persecuted somebody. You are, you've been a victim, but you've also been the victimizer. Is that a word? I think. I sure. Know. Sounds great. Keep going. Keep going, We're right? On roll, man. <laughs> We're on a roll. <laughs> no one is good. So God is coming here and saying, like, 
If you don't believe, well, you're in the same boat you've already been. But if you do believe, that things can change. I like this idea. And then notice this. Notice verse 19. This is the, this is the judgment. The light has come into the world. It's going back to chapter 1. Mm-hmm. The light of men. He, Jesus. Jesus is the very thing that gives us life has come into the world. The life giver has come, right? Mm-hmm. The light has come into the world. And people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. Mm-hmm. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works mm-hmm. may be shown to be accomplished. Just like God. when Jesus was going on these trips, he was going to these different towns and nations, he, he only saved the people who really believed in him. Like there was a story where he was walking through, I forgot where it was, but the there was this lady... She was blind, I believe, and everybody was touching her, and and the one person, and she touched him, and he only felt that person touching. He felt the power go out of him because she believed. Mm. So all these people were trying to get healed, but the one person who actually believed was the one person to get healed. Garmin, right? The Garmin, yeah. Mm -hmm. She was sick from from blood coming out of her for like 12 years. Forever, yeah. Yeah, and that's such a good point. Everybody's touching Jesus, but the one who believes was healed. That's a crazy point. And I like this. The truth comes to light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. It's like, it's, you don't go to the light in order to show your good works. You go to the light to reveal God's works in you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a, no, like, let no man boast. You know, saying, mm-hmm. oh, I did this, oh, I did that, oh, God, I did this. You don't come to the light like that. Actually, that's you running into the darkness. Mm-hmm. You come into the light revealing that God has been faithful to you. And mm-hmm. I would argue that's what it's all about. Mm-hmm. When you have overcome a sin, when you have overcome a temptation, it's it's not about the fact that you've overcome. It's about the fact that God is faithful to you. Amen. That, that's like last week where we were talking about how everything points back to God. Mm-hmm. Everything. John the Baptist, he was a way for God. He was a way to point to God. Mm-hmm. So that's a good... I love that. And Tony says he came to make the world a better place for us. Yeah. And ultimately, he came to take us out of this world, too, and to Mm -hmm. renew it and make it brand new. Guys, I think, uh, what about the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light? I think we'll end with that idea and concept. What do you think? People don't want to come to the light. Why? I think that it's like, like for years now our desires have been for evil our desires really have never been to chase god so it really like it sh- it tells me what i'm understanding is that it really takes some will some willpower to be able to change how you feel what we're accustomed to to be able to chase god mm. it takes a step of faith <laughs> a day to day more than just one day of being baptized or one day of getting married it takes day by day step by step what about you, Adrian? I think, yeah, just some things some people don't want to know they're doing wrong mm-hmm. or doing bad, nor they want. How can this be? Right? Um, mm-hmm. Sin entered the world. We, you know, we sinned, and um, this is who we are, And um, unfortunately. But um, I, th- I think also when you that darkness that creeps in, I think it's also people that want other people to justify how they're living mm-hmm. now. Yeah, that's true. They want someone to say, hey, it's okay what you're doing. And yep. These are these are the false prophets, false teachers out there. I would argue, yeah. And, and in some places, you know, other, other churches, I'm sure, and, and, you know, wherever the case may be, yep. um, just leading people astray, leading yeah. like lambs to the slaughter. Yeah. I'm like, my bad. No, go. Uh, like in human nature, it's... You want to gravitate towards company. There's more company, way more company in darkness than the light. I would argue too. It's it's a. Uh, they just want to go where, wherever they're loved or uh, getting attention, if you will. I, I I would agree with both of you. Uh, the Bible says, "Blessed are the poor in spirit, not those who have their lives together." And mm-hmm. that's kind of encouraging, because I think that as we close, it's those who are having a hard time in life. It's those who don't have the answers. It's those who keep falling. Keep falling. And the only reason why you keep falling is because you keep standing back up. It's not those who are lying down on the ground. And yeah, it's easy to lie down on the ground. It's much harder to walk. Mm-hmm. And when you walk, there's always a possibility of falling. And I would argue, Jesus has come so that you can keep getting back up. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. the key. He always reaches his hands out to pick us back up. That's it. 
and we make it so much about oh this idea that like oh when we when we got baptized we should have been perfect from that no the mm. gospel has come not to condemn the world but to save it and that saving is just the same as a marriage it's like it's it's not you're not married that one day and after that day it's over you're married throughout the rest of your life and so if you've believed in God you continue to believe in God and that means the gospel the salvation the power of his grace is still sufficient even 15 years down the line and you fall here, the grace is still sufficient. Even if you knew better, even if you got all the wisdom in the world, God's saying, my grace is still sufficient. Get back up. Mm-hmm. You know? Nicodemus, man. Imagine what he's probably feeling. A night, a conversation in the night did not go his way. And uh, hopefully it changed him. And hopefully this Reflecting Revive has done the same for you guys. We love you. Um, I do not believe we'll be here next week. Um, be tricky. I won't be here. Okay. Will you be here? I have no idea. And maybe. Who knows? Yeah, maybe we will. Maybe we won't. We'll see. If it's here, it's here. I, I won't be joining you guys next week, but these guys can. I mean, they've always done it. So, guys, till next week, Rosemary and Tony, you guys are our faithful fans. We love you. Hey. We want some enchiladas, Tony, and Rosemary, I'll take some tacos. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. Well, man, yeah, we were serious. <laughs> next Wednesday. So, thank you very much. God bless you. Um, everyone else who's watching later on, we love you and thank you for joining us for Reflect and Revive. Adrian, my man, close us out, bro. Yes, sir. Lord in heaven, thank you so much again, Lord, for your love, your patience with us, Lord, in studying this word. Yeah. Again, Lord, uh, there's so much renewing of the mind and the heart that we have to do on, on a daily basis, Lord. Yeah. Uh, whether we feel like we got it together or not, Lord, please keep your hand out reaching out. Please help us and guide us. Help us to keep reaching up when we fall. Yes, Lord. And to keep that consistency to keep that love to keep that passion to keep seeking for you lord and please do not let go of our hands continue to hold our hands in our journey guide us wherever we may go if you need to loosen it for a bit so we can learn a lesson so be it father we pray that it's a lesson that we learn and that we can uh, grow and teach others about it and move on with life Mm -hmm. and just continue to seek you no matter what yes our prayer lord is that we continue to Win souls for you, Father. Bring them to you, into your kingdom, wherever that may be, in our in our homes, our, our work, our lives, our school, wherever the case may be, our own families and friends, Father. Help us to be an example to others. Help us to have those fruits of the Spirit in everything that we do. And we thank you for everything, your love and your mercy and your grace, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, we love you. And, uh, yeah, see you next week. See you.